Hello, welcome to Chinatown Gang Stories. Today I have another story for you. It's about a former Ghost Shadow member back in the 1970s. This kid, his name was Fat Tiger, Fei Fu. Back in 1978, he joined the Ghost Shadows at the age of 16. Why they call him Fat Tiger? It's because he was a little chubby for his age. At the age of 16, he was the shooter in the gang and he had the courage of a tiger. So hence the name Fat Tiger. He was following Taiwanese boy at the time. And as you all know, if you follow my previous videos, Taiwanese boy was a high ranking member of the Ghost Shadows. And during that time in 1978, it was the height of the war between the Ghost Shadows and the White Tigers. Some of the Ghost Shadow members left the gang to join the White Tigers and there was suspicion that some of the Ghost Shadow members were spies for the White Tigers. All that led to a lot of shootings and violence in Chinatown. Fat Tiger was tasked with killing this kid, Roundhead. One day he happened to see Roundhead at the corner of Bayard Street and Ma Street and he took the opportunity to shoot at him. He fired several shots at Roundhead but missed. The police opened up a case on Fat Tiger and charged him with attempted murder. Not only was he charged for that case, he had two other pending court cases. The other one was for an unrelated assault case that happened on Mott Street. And another case, the third case, was for an extortion case. He allegedly tried to extort from the ice cream factory located on Bayard Street. Eventually, two cases out of the three got dismissed. Roundhead never showed up to be a witness, and the other victim in the assault case refused to testify, and that case was dismissed. Unfortunately for Fat Tiger, the owner of the ice cream factory store was linked to the Hong Ching gang, the Freemason gang. And he also had a personal vendetta against Fat Tiger. So the owner's girlfriend was dating Fat Tiger, so he wasn't too happy with that. So he wanted to do everything in his power to keep this kid in prison. Eventually, Fat Tiger was sentenced three to six years for that case. So let's talk about Fat Tiger and his personality. Fat Tiger, like I said, he was a pretty brave kid. He was courageous and he was a ladies man. There was this kid in the Flying Dragons called Pussy Lip. I don't know why they call him Pussy Lip. Maybe some of these Flying Dragon member who knew him can comment on the comment section below. Maybe he had sexy lips, maybe he had big lips. I don't know why they call him Pussy Lips. Well, anyway, Pussy Lips' girlfriend was dating Fat Tiger. Of course, Pussy Lip wasn't happy. So, Pussy Lip called the payphone located in front of Big Wong's restaurant in the heart of Ghost Shadow's territory. And of course, one of the Ghost Shadow picked up the phone and Pussy Lip called for a sit down. And generally, when it comes to these type of sit downs, uh, they would request a red envelope, probably a dang bow fight, which is called a breakup fee. Uh, these things went on all the way up until recently. Uh, there were some cases that I handled, um, that I heard of, uh, as early as maybe 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, where if a gang member's girlfriend went over to date somebody else, that gang member would request a breakup fee from his girlfriend's new boyfriend. And if that new boyfriend was a nobody, it would be a huge amount. You know, basically he'll get extorted. And this happened often in like karaoke's where the PR girls would set up their mark. They know the businessmen have money and they'll play the game with the businessman um, along with the gang member. They'll date the businessman and then the gang member would approach the businessman and say, hey, that, that was my girlfriend. I spent all these money on that girl for all these years and I expect a payment back. And they'll come up with a number. And some of these uh, businessmen that I heard paid well, well over six figures. You know, that was about maybe 10 years ago um, for a breakup fee. 
you know that's how they and then the girl and the gang member will split the money so that's how some of these guys get played in the case of pussy lip and fat tiger that meeting was ended pretty early and i'll tell you why so pussy lip called the payphone located in front of the restaurant dai wong which was in the heart of the ghost shadows territory ghost shadow picked up and told fat tiger about the meeting at the tong gong restaurant located on pell street Fat Tiger then grabbed another ghost shadow, the two of them went down, which was very ballsy because you have only two ghost shadows to go to this meeting, right in the heart of Pell Street in Flying Dragon's territory. When they went into the restaurant, there was about six or seven uh, Flying Dragon members sitting at the table waiting for them to show up. So now they all sat at the round table and the meeting was about to take place. So you have two ghost shadow members and about six or seven Flying Dragons. So what happened? Uncle Seven coincidentally happened to walk by the restaurant and he saw the Flying Dragon members sitting there with two Ghost Shadow members. So of course, he's shocked. He went inside the restaurant and he asked, what the fuck is going on here? Pussy Lip then told Uncle Seven what happened, how his girlfriend left him to be with Fat Tiger. And what did Uncle Seven do? Uncle Seven slapped Pussy Lip in the back of his head and said, Of course he said this in Taishanese, in his native tongue. And it translates to, You can't even fucking handle your own girl, and you expect to beat these guys up? Uncle Seven requested the meeting to end right away, and of course, the meeting ended right there. So both parties got up and left. Uncle Seven was able to prevent unnecessary violence in this case. He was very well respected by both gangs. So Fat Tiger was eventually sentenced three to six years in prison for the extortion case. When he went to prison, Taiwanese boy sent him $3,000 into his account to help him settle in. Fat Tiger bumped into Seabear in prison. And as you all know, Seabear was one of the characters I mentioned in a previous video and what he was serving time for. When he met Seabear in there, they came up with a gambling racket inside the prison, which was very lucrative. They made a lot of money. After a while, about a year or so, the COs caught wind of it and transferred both of them out to different prisons and separated them because of the racket that they were doing and they were linked to organized crime. Fat Tiger was making so much money in prison during that time that he didn't need any money coming from the outside. Him and Seabear was making so much money in there that when Fat Tiger came out from prison, he was flush with over $25,000 in cash. He got served three to six years in prison. So I don't know how much time he served, probably two to three years. When he came out from prison, he met with Taiwanese boy at a restaurant. By that time, Taiwanese boy had lost a lot of his power in the ghost shadows because Kid Zai was at the home. He was the Dai of the ghost shadows. So Fat Tiger decided to leave the life, moved out of state, and lived a quiet life since then. So if you like these type of stories and this type of content, please hit the like and subscribe button. I appreciate all the support I'm getting from my viewers. It takes time and effort and a lot of interviews to get these stories out to you. So I appreciate all the support again. Thank you so much for following this channel. Again, goodbye, Jorgin. Until next time, bye-bye. Hello everyone, this is part two of the video about the sit down between Fat Tiger and the Flying Dragons. Uh, the latest information I got, and I was able to interview someone who was at the sit down, and this happened around 1980. Uh, I was told that because Uncle Seven intervened in the matter, Fat Tiger was able to get a red envelope from the Flying Dragons and inside the red envelope contained $1,800. So there's a special meaning uh, in the Asian underworld. This $1,800 is a special meaning to it. So if any one of you know what uh, $1,800 stands for, please feel free to comment in the comments section below. Uh, but that's the information I got. And I got another piece of information is that uh, Fat Tiger knew uh, Uncle Seven ever since he was a child and he 
his family also knew him pretty well. So maybe that's why um, he intervened in that matter. I don't know. But um, but anyway, um, Fat Tiger and Sea Bear and this guy named Big Mac, they were like the early members of the uh, Ghost Shadows. And when Sea uh, Bear and Big Mac got out of prison, they did their time together. Um, they got deported and went to Hong Kong. And when they were in Hong Kong, they became members of the triad, 14K. So that's why the Ghost Shadows have their connection uh, to the 14K triad in Hong Kong. And of course, if you follow my channel, you would also know that the Ghost Shadows are also connected to the Gong Lok uh, triad in Toronto. So they have their connections. Um, sea Bear and Fat Tiger ran a racket inside a uh, prison when they were doing time in the Elmira. Uh, they were running a uh, gambling operation, a uh, bookmaking operation, as well as uh, loan sharking. Uh, so they uh, they had it good in there. Uh, the correction officers were bringing in steaks for them, for them to cook inside the, uh, the prison. So it was like uh, straight out from the movie Goodfellas, basically. Uh, but eventually they got caught and um, they separated them. And they uh, sent Fat Tiger to Clinton and... They sent Sea Bear to uh, Attica. Now, well, when they finished their time, uh, I heard that uh, Fat Tiger uh, left a life of crime, uh, moved out of state, and uh, Sea Bear got deported to Hong Kong. And that's where he became a high ranking member of the uh, 14K triad. Uh, so that's the latest update I got. I'm um, try to get a little bit more information and any new information I get. I'll be coming on this channel and uh, stay tuned for more. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe and please share the channel. And I'll uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.